Hey yo, what's up my little coders? Let me show you in this tutorial how to solve the little question number 1752. Check if array is sorted and rotated. Let me just explain you an example what we need to do basically. Imagine that this is our input array. If we sort this input array, this is what we will get. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Check if array is sorted, but also check if it's rotated. So with the sorted array, we also need to check if, if it has been rotated. And when, when you rotate, you just basically select like a random value x. We don't know to what it will be equal, but in this case, they explain that x is equal to 3, which will mean that you, that you rotate the array by three positions. So from the sorted array, the first value will be moved to the right by three positions. So from here, we will go 1, 2, 3. After we rotate the array, 1 should be here, which is correct. Then the second value also moves by three positions. So 1, 2, 3, then 2 will be somewhere in the end. And yeah, 2 is somewhere in the end. With the middle element, if we go by three positions, we do 1, 2, okay, that's the, that, that's the end of the array. So we will do like 3, and we'll appear here in the beginning of the array. And 4 will go like to this value, which is correct. 5 will go to this value, which is also correct. So this array has been sorted and rotated by three positions. And if the array has been sorted and rotated, we just return true. If it hasn't been sorted and rotated, in this case, we need to return false. This is basically what we need to do, guys. How can we solve this problem efficiently without actually sorting the array and trying to rotate by the possible amount of uh, positions? Let's think about some patterns. Okay, imagine if x is equal to 0. It's like the base case, let's say. In this case, if x is equal to 0, it means that we basically don't rotate the array because we rotate it by 0 positions, which like, will mean that we need to check if this array, if the original array, is just sorted. If we don't rotate it, we just check only if it's sorted or not. But if x is not equal to 0, but it's equal to, to like a positive number, which is greater than 0, what it would mean for us? Then it will mean that like if the array is indeed has been sorted and rotated, it will mean that like somewhere we will have like two small arrays which are both sorted, and else the last value from the second array is uh, not greater than the first value in the array. This is basically the pattern, and this is the conditions for which we need to check in order to identify if the array has been sorted and rotated in case if x is not equal to zero. Okay, let's just code it, guys. Okay, guys, so we create the integer to basically increment our counter and keep track of in how many places the values are not sorted. If the counter will be greater than one at any point, we just return false straight away because it will mean that this array is not sorted and rotated at the same time. But if you just find one place where the current element is basically greater than the next element, in this case, we'll increment the counter but if you, will not, if you will not find any other places where this condition applies, in this case, we'll increment it only, one and only once and we will not return false here. In this case, we'll iterate through the full array and we just will return true in the end. But there is one very hacky thing here. So we, just, we don't just check for the next element, but we also do like i plus 1 and then mod the, the, by the length of the array. And what does this mod actually do? Okay, let me explain you guys. So if you start with the first value at index 0, we do i 0 plus, plus 1, which is equal to 1. So we do 1 mod 5, because nums.length is equal to 5, because there are 5 elements. And if you do uh, 1 mod 5, we basically get 1. Then if you will go to the next element, so i will be equal to 1, i plus 1 plus i is equal to 2. If you do 2 mod 5, we also will get uh, Two. If you if you do like three mod five, we get three. If you do four mod five, we get four. But guys, if you do five mod five, we get zero. And 
what does it mean? It means that like when we will iterate and we'll be at the last element, and in this case, i will be equal to four, and if we do four plus one, it will be five, and we do five mod, or mod five, we will get zero, which will mean that like we will check the element at index zero. So we compare this element with this element. And in this case, basically we'll iterate through the full array and we'll check if there are two sorted subarrays and the last value in the sorted subarray is not greater than the first value in the array. And yeah, it's basically equivalent of checking if the array has been sorted and rotated at the same time. And if at any moment this condition will apply twice, we just will return false. Otherwise return true. This is basically all what we need to do. So if I run the code now, it works. If I just submit, guys, if I submit, I get 100%. Simply as that, guys. I hope it was it was clear and you understood everything. Please, guys, make sure you subscribe to my channel to not miss a lot of videos which are going to come soon. And guys, challenge your friends to see if they can solve this question or not. Then leave in the comment section the comment like saying which little question you want me to solve next. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Good luck.